YouTube team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question you want to, and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, y'all can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids, and if not, that's okay. I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. I appreciate y'all. Great questions, like always. Let's do it. Cap space. First question came from my guy Terry. He said, "What's up, Engraving? Hope you and the fam are chilling and having a great 22 so far." Wanted to ask you, who are potential free agents the Ravens can sign with 9.8 million cap space? And if you had to choose two out of the three players to re-sign, who would it be? Pat Ricard, Anthony Averett, Bradley Bozeman. Hope you have a great day. Okay, we'll start with that question first. Uh, so it would definitely be Bradley Bozeman and uh, Anthony Averett uh, if I had to choose. Um, reason being because consistency on offensive line and more secondary help. Um, as far as um, some potential free agents with $9.8 million, I'm, I'm not sure how much the Ravens are going to have in cap space because they're going to make their own cuts too. They're going to do their own extensions as well. So I'm sure whatever the number is right now, which I don't know, is going to change. It's going to fluctuate. It's, it's going to be different. Um, but some potential guys, I know Honey Badger has been floating around so much, and so many people would love for Honey Badger to be on a team, and I would too. Oh, I would love it. Oh, man, because that would give us a playmaking safety on the squad, and we're missing that. And a true free safety, like a guy who can cover back there, make up some ground. Um, so it'll be him. I would love, like a dream. You're talking dreams. Um, Devontae Adams, I would love that one too. Oh, man. Um, and uh, J.C. Jackson, I would love that one as well. Uh, another one, um, Bobby Wagner, uh, I would love for, for him. And it, it, he would only be here like two years probably, but still, because uh, we will get a little bit younger at, at linebacker from Josh Bynes. Um, so Bobby Wagner would be another one. Um, who else? And whoever the best offensive lineman <laughs> to focus Cause we need it, man. Offensive line is struggling. And is there is there a tight end out there who just who's gonna be a free agent who just like that, man? I mean, he ain't gotta be like that, like that, but somebody else who could do some stuff, not necessarily like Mark Andrews, but similar to Mark Andrews, like a pass catching tight end who's could stretch the field. Just a little bit. You ain't, you ain't, again, you ain't gotta be Mark Andrews. We ain't asking you to be Mark Andrews, but if you could do something that kind of resembles that a bit, okay, cool. Um and yeah, so and, and I'm not sure the uh, interior defensive linemen who are going to become available uh, this offseason. But yeah, that, that's th those are some names that I would want because, um, you know, the, the Ravens wish list, the Ravens wish list when it comes to potential free agents. You know, for us Ravens fans, that, that, that list is long, man. It's a long list, man. but we love it. It's fun to talk about every year. It's fun to think about the, the possibilities. So we'll see if any of those possibilities actually come to fruition. Lamar or Greg? Oh, next question came from my boy Ray Sean. He said, this may be a long one, but I would like your insight. Uh, watching these wonderful offenses in the playoffs irritates me because the Ravens have the capability of being that great offense in the playoffs. But is it Lamar or Greg? That's the problem. It's been a healthy dose of both. But... Well, let's finish. He said, I'm a little overprotective of Mr. Lamar Jackson because of how great he is and will continue to be in the future, especially when he improves on the things he needs to improve on. I am not biased and understand there are still things he has to work on. We all know that. But one thing I cannot stand is the narrative about Lamar's lack of success in the playoffs. I hate hearing that Lamar Jackson's playoff success is a concern. He can't make it past the divisional round. He can't win a playoff game. And all the narratives about him just being a regular season quarterback. Unpopular opinion, I think that his best performance in the playoffs was the lost the loss in uh, 2019 against the Titans. It seemed like he was the only one to show up. Well, Hollywood was too. Uh, and everyone re relied on Lamar to win the game while they took a nap on the field. So many missed opportunities to just kick the field goal. So many dropped touchdowns and passes that could have gotten us a first down conversions. Uh, but most importantly, it seemed like Mr. Greg relied on Lamar to do it all himself too. Oof. Honestly, I don't think Gregory called a terrible game, and that was one of his better games as far as play calling regarding the playoffs. The problem was that he had our running backs run the ball about eight times and had Lamar throw the ball 50 times in the game. Yeah, that was my issue. And it, it was nine times. I had the running backs run the ball nine times. Nine times. One of them got three carries, and the other one got six carries. I forgot how it was divvied up, but that's how it was. And it was between Mark Ingram and Gus Edwards. And Mark Ingram was hurt. 
As we know, situational play calling with Greg is not his strong suit. Neither is game planning or using the players to the best of their ability. Greg is a lazy coach and even more lazy in the playoffs. Oh, yikes. Question. How is it that the offense in the regular season is so great, but in the playoffs, they're stale? How is it that we were one of the highest scoring offenses in the regular season, but scored 13, 20, and three points in our last three playoff games? I know that Mr. Jackson hasn't been flawless in those games, but he has not been the reason we've lost those games. And you know what, Engraven? Neither has the defense been the reason why we've lost those games. It has always been the offense as a whole. Yes, correct. Wink may have had his flaws, but he always had a top five defense in the regular season, minus this 2021 season. But the defense is always top notch in the playoffs, except for 2019 against the Titans. But the offense didn't necessarily help them out either. Uh, we don't see that same success with the offense because of our, our, our offensive coordinator, not Lamar. Cut it out with the question. Uh, can Lamar make a deep playoff run and start questioning Greg Roman on the lack of Ravens playoff success? In my case for Greg needing to go is because of that alone. I'm tired of the lazy coaching. Also forgot to ask a question. So what's your thoughts on why we haven't had success in the playoffs? Mm, really good question. Um, so, yeah, the... It's a lot of things. I know with, with the playoffs, sometimes it's these teams that uh, you've seen twice or you've seen early in the season, so that can make it harder to have success against them again. Um, sometimes it's, it can be filmed, too. It can be filmed. Like we, we already know that with Ravens' offense, again, the situational play calling, is, 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 it can be so bad a lot of times. A lot of times it can just be so bad. And again, like I said earlier, Lamar is not blameless at all. He's not. He got plenty of stuff that he has to make sure he does better as well. But everything starts from the top. It, it, in my opinion, it should always be, all right, well, this failed because of execution. This was bad because of execution. It shouldn't be that the play was a failure from jump and it was just terrible, a terrible call. It should always be on the players. But that's the problem is, is that it's not. It's not. It's not. A lot of times players are just not set up to have success uh, with this offense or consistent success in this offense. And they're not set up to have situational success in this offense. Um, with, with the offense, the and again, you, 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 you've seen the history with, with Greg Roman and stuff. Um, but as far as playoffs, oh, playoffs. Well, um, 2019 was a lot of drops. Uh, it was the Ravens not taking their points because there was opportunities where they could have kicked field goals and it would have been a much better game. Um, there was uh, the turnovers. Uh, it was the lack of the running game. Uh, it was, oh, just a mess. And then like Titans, a lot of their scores, the, the, the biggest changes in the game came from Ravens just turning the ball over. Came from Ravens turning the ball over. I think... When Titans actually had to drive, they ended up, the most points that they got was field goals. But their, their touchdowns, they ended up coming off of turnovers. So that was that. 2020, um, Lamar threw a big-time pick, big-time interception, that pick six. Uh, and then there just seemed to be a lack of effort. When he threw that pick, like, that's already bad enough. But then there seemed to be a lack of effort from everybody trying to tackle. Um, the guy, was it Micah Hyde or the other one? I forgot. But trying to tackle the guy who made the pick. Uh, it's like oh, it's like they were like, all right, well, he, Lamar threw the pick. All right, it is what it is now. Just let him get a touchdown. Um, then there was it was poor offensive line play as well, because uh, in that one, the offensive line again, uh, they the, the center who was, was it Skrull? That I think it was Skrull, but where the, the snap that got Lamar taken out, where the, the ball went way over his head, and snaps have been an issue throughout the year, um, but. They they continued uh, with Ravens, uh, whatever. This is really with a lot of teams too, um, because and, and there was a lack of adjustments. But as we have seen with Ravens a lot, whatever their biggest Achilles heel is, whatever their biggest problem is in the regular season, oh, it shows itself all the way in the playoffs, all the way, all the way. And in twenty twenty, offensive line was a problem. Center was a problem. Snapping the ball was a problem. All that showed up. All of it. All of it. And then the lack of adjustments to those situations. Uh, and then in 2021, it's, well, they obviously ain't make the playoffs this past season. 
Um, but it was same issues, not adjusting to the situation. It was so crazy because it's like, all right, Giro, you know that the Ravens' offensive line, they ain't built like that right now, man. They hurt. They're not playing good. They're not playing with. They're they not. No, they're not like that right now. Let's incorporate maybe an up-tempo. Not every single drive, but up-tempo, short passing game. Let's do that. Let's, let's do that a lot more often um, because that, that could pay, pay off big. But they just would not do it. They would not do it. With Lamar, again, like I said, lots on him too. When, there will be times when he would have time and just wouldn't come, off, come up off of the ball. You got to get rid of that thing, man. You got to get rid of it. There will be a lot of times where he would be waiting and waiting and waiting for a play to happen and just it wouldn't happen. See, he would hold on to the ball, hold on, hold on, hold on, boom, sacked. Can't do that. You got to live to live, live to see another down, man. Throw that ball away. And he got to get better in the short passing game, too. He got to get a lot better at that. And, again, timing routes. Those anticipatory throws where he anticipates that the receiver is going to come open or break on that route at this point, and he throws the ball there. Instead of waiting for the receiver to be open, throw him open. That would make this offense that much better, too. So, it's again, it's not one or the other. It's definitely both of them uh, that share blame in this thing. Um, for me, like I said, it, it, it starts with, with the coaching, um, uh, and then it does trickle down to the players as well. And in this case, with, with your question, with Lamar too. So, it's definitely both. Lamar's contract. Next question came from my boy Nicholas. He said, Hey, Graven, I was thinking about Lamar Jackson contract rumors, Brady retiring and, and still having – and us still having Greg Roman. My question is, what would you think if the Ravens, instead of lowballing, highballed Lamar? Thinking about it, Lamar has other business endeavors like Brady and is trying to build past football. What if they offered him a true generational wealth contract, 45 mil plus per year, but Lamar is looking at the state of the roster and does not want a Joe Flacco situation? He's already blamed for so much, uh, but then being the scapegoat for lack of talent, no thanks. He may be asking for more input and control over the offense, but the money they offer was a shut up and play type of contract. Just my two cents. What do you think? Oh, man. That is, uh, like, I've thought about that before, but not in as much detail as you put into it. Like, I thought, okay, um, if uh, maybe they did offer him something that was really nice, cool, but he was looking at the shape of the roster and was like, ah, no, but the way that you put it, if they offered him something, even if it was 45 plus per year, but he didn't want to already be the scapegoat for them having lack of talent because they could be like, oh, look at the contract he signed. Now we can't get nobody. Oh, Lamar, hey, we, we paid you, though, right? So go out there and do your thing. We, we, hey, but we ain't got it for nobody else now. So, um, but ah, that, I, I just think it's, I think it's along those lines. Um, maybe not the money. It could be, though, but I, I think with, as far as the money, though, um, I think it's just more so him being like, no, we're we, we going to ride this thing out. We're we going to play this thing out. And again, because after last year, and you if you resign him right now, this is the cheapest that you're going to be able to get him for. It's, it's going to be the cheapest that it can possibly get. He plays this next season and finishes the whole season, and it's, it's only going to go up. It's only going to go up. So uh, it would be smart. Again, why? Because, again, that this year is guaranteed. 23 mil guaranteed. It's guaranteed. So he's getting money. But... Once he signs a deal, like that's what his. Once he signs that deal, then that's it for the next what four years, five. And they could of course restructure here and there, but that's gonna be set. But for whatever is set at, it could be set at a much higher number. You play out this year and, and get even more bread. But I, I do love the detail in your thinking on this one. And last question on this episode came from my guy Mark B. He said, greetings. How's life in Graven? Strap in because I got a host of questions. Oh, yikes. Uh, that's why I said this would be the last one because I, I see all these numbers. I see 15 numbers. Wow. It's probably more. He said, number one, on the, off on the offensive side of the ball, who's the standout player of the year and why? Um, I will say Lamar because, um, yeah, he, uh, yeah. Lamar, because I mean, we saw what happened when he wasn't out there. Um, but I feel like that would be sort of such an easy answer. But besides Lamar, 
I'll go, uh, oh, but standout. Oh, Mark Andrews. What? I'm tripping. Man, I, like, he, he slipped my mind. Mark Andrews. Wow. Um, number two. Oh, did Mark Andrews become the breakout Raven of the year? I mean, uh, yeah, I guess, because he ended, he ended up being the best tight end this year. Um, but was it really breaking out? Because I feel like... It, I feel like this has been like sort of expected the the way that his career has been going because it's just been getting better and better every year. But I guess he he did like really like blow it out the water this year, especially how things started. He really uh had a a hot end to the year too. He started off a little shaky here and there, but then he started trending upward and he went off. And then he still went off with other quarterbacks besides Lamar. So like, he could have fell off once Lamar fell off or when once Lamar went out, but he didn't. So. Yeah, I did. I would say he broke out. Number three, what was the biggest offensive obstacle the Ravens encountered this year? Uh, besides injuries, uh, offensive line. Um, offensive line. Oh, and he said in 3B, why? So what was the biggest offensive obstacle the Ravens encountered this year and why? Uh, so I say injuries, uh, offensive line, and play calling. Uh, because all three of those mixed together, um, it just – and mi- all three of those in the Ravens situation mixed together. Because there's some other situations, some other teams, they, they would overcome that stuff because they would adjust to the situation. But it felt like that all three of those things just went so far against the Ravens and what their situation was. Number four, where do you see Lamar in the offense improve the most next season? Uh, hopefully for me, it will be in uh, the short passing game and also um, and just really scoring. Finishing drives. That, that would be the biggest thing for me. Finishing drives. Finish situational play calling, but just finish finishing what they start. Not just moving the ball from the 20 to the 20, but actually from the 20 inside the one inside the end zone. Finishing. Finishing what they started. Um, number five, looking into your crystal ball, will Roman last until the end of the 2022 season? Mm. Wow. That's a really good question. I'll say no. Uh, number six, on the defensive side of the ball, who's the standout player of the year and why? Standout player of the year. Oh, on defense. It's Josh Bynes, but he's like standout. Um, mm. Wow. I can't even say Calais. Can't, uh, can't say it. I feel real Bowser. Just. Oh, man. I, I don't really think we have one. Unless I miss us. I don't really think we have one, though. Number seven, he said, what should the Ravens do with Patrick Queen? Um, I say still try to. They did get a new linebackers coach in Zachary Orr. So that's a good start. Um, But also, I say bring in somebody. Bring in somebody uh, who can be here for like the next one or two years. And then go from there. Don't don't put everything on Patrick Queen. Don't put the full weight of being that guy on Patrick Queen. Still continue to alleviate some. Uh, so that'll let him play more free and more confident. But he's also going to be in a new defensive system too. So that should help. Uh, number eight. Is the Ravens secondary or front seven more to blame for the defense's weakness this season? Uh, I would say the lack of adjustment. So I would say neither. I would just say the lack of adjustment by uh, Wink. Um, that was a big problem with him. Um, just lack of adjusting to what the situation was. You lost your top corner. Then you lost your other top corner. Then you lost the guy who was your top corner since your other two top corners were out. You kept losing all these corners, but you still kept putting these guys on islands. You still weren't giving them help. You still played it like you had everybody in. So I I would say that's what it was. Uh, number nine, where do you see McDonald improving the Ravens' defensive defense the most? I would say pass rush. Uh, letting the edge rushers be themselves, letting them eat, letting the pass rushers be pass rushers. So hopefully that that's ends up what it ends up being. Uh, number 10, which Ravens defender are you most excited to get healthy and play next season? <laughs> oh, I think for us all, it's Marcus Peters. Um, but just really everybody as a whole, I would just love to see the unit be healthy and stay healthy. Uh, but yeah, Marcus Peters, if I had to pick one individually. Number 11, do you see the Ravens trading? Uh, oh, excuse me. Do you see the Ra- <laughs> My mind's on greedy mode. He said, do you see the Ravens drafting Matt Arazia, a punter, to replace Sam Cook? Um, I think the Ravens could go the undrafted route. Uh, if they draft a punter, then it'd be like, whoa, uh-oh. 
But I could see them going an the undrafted route and just having somebody like if if what they would normally do would be to keep somebody. Watch how they do the practice squad this year because they did it last the year before last. They kept Nick Moore on the practice squad like all season long. And we're like, what? They really keeping a long snap on a practice squad? Then boom, they released Morgan, uh, Morgan Cox. He signed with the Titans. Then they uh, put Nick Moore on the, uh, the, the active roster. And he was a long snapper this year. So it would be important to see what they do if they keep a punter on a practice squad because that may give us an indication. But anyway, um, number 12, how much of the cap should the Ravens dedicate to Lamar? He said, dude, honestly, deserves the whole thing, but that ain't how the NFL works. Um, whatever the market value is, man, whatever the market value is, I'm not sure what the percentage of it is, though. Number 13, what's your thoughts on the Brian, Brian Flores allegations? Are there any truth to it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what goes on behind closed doors at the Miami Dolphins in the, within the, their organization. Um, but Brian Flores certainly did put a lot of pressure on the NFL, and I think he caused some hires to some different hires to be made than uh, what teams were planning on doing. Number 14, what do you think of the final score of the Rams and Bengals game? Um, well, hopefully you see this before the Super Bowl. Um, but I would say 28-24. Uh, yeah, I say 28-24. And he said 15. Oh. <laughs> Number 15, what's the next step for the channel? I uh, love your content and excited to see it grow. Oh, I don't even know, man. Just consistency. I, I, I don't know. We always looking for ways to just try to do stuff better um, and just try to just try to keep having fun. Um, but I'm not sure. That's a re really, really good question. But uh, I'm not sure. All right, you said, thanks for the response. I've been uh, preoccupied with COVID complications and your content has helped me feel connected to a community. I'm grateful for your occasional wellness checks. Thanks for all of that. I uh, appreciate that. And he said, oh, which rookie had the best season and most promising future with the Ravens? Um, on offense, Adolf, I was about to say on offense, Adolf Fairway. On defense, Adolf Fairway. On offense, uh, Rashad Bateman. Um, and, but Ben Cleveland. I think uh, toward the end of the season when he did finally come in, I think he did all right. I think he did all right. Um, but, yeah, I, I appreciate all these questions. This was fun. This was fun. I normally don't really like uh, the, the, the structure of this normally, but the way you did it, you kept it fun. You kept it fresh. It wasn't anything crazy or two. So this was, this was perfect. So I appreciate this a lot. see my boy. He like got a made it.